man, when carnation gets too coughing up life bells dust, why they can stuff him with sawdust and park him in front of a harness shop. <laughs> Damn, a horse that can run that fast ain't human. I'd give my right arm to own him. Boy, boy, 140. Well, Evans were a cinch. He ran that in 140, flat. He wasn't running, Mr. Morgan. What do you mean? He was just walking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kid, take it back to sales. All right, kid. Now, I got a hunch you're going to win yourself a race today, Dan. That isn't a hunch, Joe. That's more like a sure thing. And that isn't all. Watch this cop first in the big race. Well, it's high time some of us fellows here on long shot lane get a crack at that big money. Yeah, I know. Walter Hammond's been copping the gravy around here so long, it's ceasing to be funny. I hear he stands to clean up a half million if Carnation wins the big one. Yeah, I know. But his business is due for an unexpected depression. Yeah, I guess you're right, Dan. You know, I'm beginning to think that prosperity is here. And it's me that's around the corner. Listen, he's got to be over to the receiving barn in an hour. That sure is a crazy rule, making a man bring a horse over there for inspection. They know a man like you wouldn't give no horse hops. No, oh, Mose, it's a good rule. Makes honest men out of some of these pirates around here. All right, get going. Come on, baby. Hey, Midget. Hi, Mr. Hammond. Come on over here. I want to talk with you. We haven't a chance to beat life up this afternoon, Midget. Not unless you'd like to pick yourself up some easy dough. How come, Mr. Hammond? Well, you can crowd him into the rail or cut him down and there's a grand in it for you. A grand? Why, that ain't much more than a tip for a head waiter. Oh. All right. 2,500. No dice, Mr. Hammond. Better think it over, Midget. It's a pretty soft touch. Still no dice, Mr. Hammond. Well, little man, what now? Hey, knapsack. What can he do? Do? Well, that kid would commit murder for me. <laughs> nice playmate. Yes, Mr. Hammond. Got a little job for you. Come on into the office. There is enough dope in this to hurt the horse. Just enough to put Morgan on the spot. Suppose the horse won't take it. Then shove it down his throat. Leave it to me, boss. Oh, knapsack. Come here. Turn around. This always gives me luck. Sometime you'll need a lot of luck, Mr. Hammond. Oh, yeah? I've warned you a dozen times, Walter. Knapsack doesn't like you to rub his back. Someday he'll turn on you. No, he's all right.
There they go, all together. Donald is first on the outside. Lady Killer is second on the rail. San Mateo third and Life Belt fourth. Morgan's got a swell bit of horse flesh there. to turn on the heat. Do not destroy your tickets until the race has been declared official. Give him a nice ride, Evan. Had his head in my lap all the way. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Hammond? How are you, Judge? Anything I can do for you? Yes, there is. I've reason to believe that the winner of this last race has been stimulated. And I want a saliva test. Why, surely you don't believe it's that... It's my uh... privilege to demand this test, isn't it? Why, uh, yes, certainly. But uh, really, I, I can't hardly believe that you're serious. Oh, I'm serious, all right. Just a minute. Let's call Morgan up and hear what he has to say. Oh, Morgan, come up here a minute, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. Hammond insists that your horse be given a saliva test. If I didn't know you so well, Judge Billings, I'd think I'd be in I may be all wrong about this, Morgan. And if I am, I'm only too willing to apologize. Well, go right ahead and make all the tests you want to. I never doped a horse in my life. We think you mean that, Morgan. But it's Mr. Hammond's privilege, and all we can do is order the test made. Is that all? That's all. Thank you very much, General. Take life belt over to the vet for a saliva test. Hello, Dan. Hello, Fred. The vet make his report yet? The vet says life belt was stimulated, and the stewards have ruled you off for a year. Ruled me off for a year? And suspended the horse for six months. Fred, do you think I'd dope one of my horses? I know you wouldn't, Dan. You're too good a sport. But that isn't the point. The chemist found your horse had been hopped up, and there was nothing for the stewards to do but rule you off. I suppose that means I've got to leave the track today. That's right, Dan. Listen, if life belt was dope, somebody did it to frame me. Someday I'm going to find out who it was. And when I do, it's going to be too bad. Does that mean we all got to move, Mr. Dan? Yes, no. Order of Ann. Billy had a little fever this morning, but she's beginning to take some interest in her oats. I guess she'll be all right, but 
There's something else that's worse. What's that? Well, the color sergeant broke down again. Same old trouble? Yeah, bad feet. I don't think we can ever bring that horse back to training, Mr. Hammond. Why do you keep fooling with him, Walter? Because if I ever get him right, he'll beat any horse in training. Why don't you sell him? Sell him? Nobody wants a horse with soft feet. Well, you couldn't get $10 for him in the open market. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm not going to waste any more feed on him. Have the track vet come over and destroy him. Yes, sir. Right away. All ready, Mr. Dance. Well, so long, Mose. What do you mean, so long? Well, you don't have to leave. They didn't rule you off. Well, if they rules you off, they rules me off, too. That is, if you take me. Those pork chops are going to be kind of scarce. That's all right with me. Okay. Here, let's go. So long, kid. Too bad, Mr. Morgan. I'm sorry it had to happen that way. That's okay, Midget. You've got nothing to do with it, even if you do work with Hammond. Well, my love for this horse lady killer is the only reason I'm sticking with Hammond. I sure wish you owned him. Yeah, so do I. He's a great horse. Well, how do you do, Mr. Morgan? How do you do? I hear you're leaving us. Did you prospect elsewhere? Yes, Miss Bosswick. I thought a change of air might do me some good. Well, do you think you'll take some sugar today, Midget? I don't know. You can try. Well, that's funny. Doesn't he go for sugar? No, the only horse I know that don't. Well, that's one for Ripley, a horse refusing sugar. Well, perhaps Hammond feeds him something stronger. So long, Midget. So long, Mr. Morgan. Lots of luck to you. See you later. I hope. Goodbye, Miss Lawson. Oh, please don't Get miss out of the way. Don't What's the matter with color, Sergeant? Oh, he's gone lame and they're doing away with him. Poor old boy. Please don't shoot him, mister. If you give him to me, I'll take good care of him. Come, come, boy. Now get out of the way. Oh, please don't, mister. Oh, please don't. Please, mister. Don't let him shoot him. But it's the only humane thing to do, son. Wait a minute. I'll give you ten bucks for that hide. You seem to be making a collection of has-been horses, Morgan. Ten bucks, huh? All right, it's a go. Why should I spend twenty-five having them carted away? What about a bill of sale? Come up to the office and I'll give it to you. Be up a little later. There won't be any shooting, Vet. Hey, it's me. Gee, thanks, mister. That's all right. Well, son, we own a horse. We? Sure, from now on, you and I are partners. Oh, gee, mister, you're a swell <laughs> guy. But now that we've got him, what are we going to do with him? Train him. Oh, but you can't do that. He's lame. And besides, I'm leaving the track today. Well, we can take him to Bayside. Me and June's got a stable over there with lots of room. Who's June? Well, June's a sick. Oh, and I'm Jimmy. Jimmy Curtis. Oh, I see. What do you call your stable? Well, when my dad was living, it was called the Sea View. But nowadays, well, all the other horsemen call it the Hardly Able Stable. Why? Well, because they're hardly able to pay all our bills or move from one track to another. <laughs> Neighbor. What are you doing way over here? Well, I came over to see if I couldn't earn some money exercising or rubbing down the horses. Oh, I see. All set, Mr. Morgan. Okay. Give me you know my boy, Mose, don't you? Glad to know you. So is I. Bring the band back here, Mose. Yes, sir. Now listen, partner. I want you to run over to the drugstore and get some nice soft bandages and a bottle of liniment. We've got to get this horse on his feet. Okay. Hurry it up. Hey, June, 
I got a horse, a real live horse. A real live horse with four legs and everything? Sure. Well, but one of them's kind of bad. Where'd you get him? Me and Dan bought him. Who's Dan? My partner, Dan Morgan. Uh, Jimmy, you might introduce me. Oh, sure. Oh, uh, Dan, this is my sister, June. How do you do? Jimmy told me so much about you on the way down here that I feel I already know you, Miss Curtis. My name is Dan Morgan. Glad to know you, Mr. Morgan. Oh, why don't you two start from scratch? This is June and this is Dan. Is that all right with you, Miss? I mean, uh... Sure, Dan. But what's all this partner business Jimmy's talking about? Well, you see, Jimmy and I own this horse, Color Sergeant. Is that the real Color Sergeant? The one that won the futurity? That's him. Oh, but he must have cost a fortune. I'll tell you all about it when I've given the old boy a few preliminary treatments. Come on, Moe, get that book on the Boy, oh boy, when we get this horse in shape, there won't be anything that will beat him. Ah, you're talking, Jimmy. Ah, Hand me that uh, liniment, Moe. What a stable we've got. Color sergeant and life belt. Ha! We've gone places. Yeah, by the way, did you see if we had any oats left? There ain't nary an oat left. There isn't. No, sir. What about this, Jimmy? Haven't you any feet around here? Well, I told you why we call it the hardly able stables. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Say, uh, Jimmy. What? How old is your sister? Now, if you're going to let a woman enter into this partnership... Oh, but, Jimmy, beautiful women and race horses go hand in hand. Uh-oh. That man's here again. Poor sis. What do you mean? Who is that? That's the feed man. He's here to collect, or else. Or else what? Or else he'll take everything we own. Oh, he wouldn't do that. Oh, he wouldn't, huh? He just put two of them out of business last week. Oh, he did, huh? Tough guy. Listen, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I know, Miss Curtis. But I've simply got to have this feed bill paid, or I'll attack your stable. But, Mr. Craddock, if you'd just give me a little more time. You see, I have a new tenant here, some thoroughbreds. Miss Curtis, something terrible has happened. My best horse just dropped dead. What? Yes, come, I'll show you. Uh, just a minute, Miss Curtis. Oh, Poor old color sergeant. Won't we'll never be able to race no more. There. Dead. Killed by poison feed. Where's your feed man? Where can I reach him? Why, this is he, Mr. Craddock. So, you're responsible for the death of my horse. A steak horse worth a hundred thousand dollars. Just a minute, sir. There must be some mistake. The biggest mistake you ever made, I can assure you of that. Why, do you realize what this means? Selling inferior feed, killing poor, dumb animals? He's a swell horse. Was. Look! The horse moved! He what? Why, man, are you drunk? No, I saw him move. Look, there he goes again. Well, you're right, there is still a spark of life. Jimmy, get a bet. Yeah, hurry, hurry up, boy. And the least I can do is pay the bill. The least you can do is try to buy me off. Well, sir, you can't get away with it. As a member of the Racing Association, it's my... Uh, but surely, sir, you'll give me a chance to make amends. I'm willing to do anything that you think is right. Well, now, just what do you think is right? Uh, if that is, if we keep quiet about this whole thing, and, of course, if the horse recovers. Well... I'll take care of the vet's fee and uh, send a truckload of feed down to you. What? More of your poison feed? Oh, no, sir. No, this is the very finest. I'll guarantee it, even if I have to have each and every oat analyzed. 
What about this, miss? Is this man's word dependable? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, put that in writing. All right, sir. <laughs> you won't uh, say anything about this to anyone, will oh, you? Oh, no. <laughs> Good, thank you, sir. What's the matter, partner? He went lame on me, Dad. I can feel him fold up. Oh, don't worry. We'll get him in shape yet. We only could, just to win one race in our colors. We'll do that, Jimmy. Now, don't worry. Take him over to Moe and tell him to soak those feet. Okay. Poor kid. He's got his heart set on seeing color sergeant make a comeback. Isn't there some way we can train him and still save his feet? None that I ever heard of. Oh, if we only could, Dan. He'd beat anything on this track. Yeah, or any other track. What's the matter with Buster, Jimmy? Oh, it's his foot. He can't set it on the ground. You better take him back to the stable and put some liniment on that. Okay. Come on, Buster. Come on, Buster. Come on. Come on, at it, boy. Nice going. Keep it up. You're terribly disappointed, aren't you, Dan? Oh, it's a tough break after the way we've worked on Color Sergeant the last three weeks. Do you believe in hunches? Sure. Everybody around a racetrack plays them once in a while. Why? Well, I have a hunch that you're going to solve this riddle. How to make color sergeant race again. There isn't a trainer in America that wouldn't bet you a hundred to one that your hunch is wrong. It is, June. He's getting his will and his muscles in shape just as much as he would by running around that track morning after morning. Of course. Runners get into perfect condition merely by swimming, so why shouldn't a horse? In ten days, Color Sergeant will be at the top of his form without having pounded his feet to pieces on that hard track. He is blowing a bit, Dan, and he's enjoying himself like a fish. Why, sure. And I bet his feet are just as cool as a turtle. I 
God, whoopsie, I'm so dead and it's going to be all right. Oh, oh sit yeah. down, Jimmy, you'll turn us over. Behave oh. yourself, Jimmy, you know I can't swim. But I tell you, I saw him, row boat and all. And then I clocked him doing a mile and 138 flat. Oh. Swam the horse in the condition while they saved his feet. <laughs> Morgan's a smarter guy than I thought he was. What difference does it make if Color Sergeant can step a mile in 138? Morgan can't race him as long as he's ruled off. But he don't belong to Morgan. He belongs to that kid, uh, uh, Jimmy Curtis. Morgan had me make the bill of sale out in the kid's name, and the horse is eligible for the race. Then he's twice as smart as you thought he was. If Color Sergeant is right, he can beat Carnation, and you know it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that. If you want to help, why don't you suggest a way to keep the horse from running? Well, why don't you try to buy him from the Curtis kid? Hey, maybe you've thrown off an idea with that. matter, sis? What you crying for? Oh, it's nothing, Jimmy. I'm just a little tired. Oh, I know what it is. Those bills. But don't you worry, sis. Call sergeant will pull us through. You're Jimmy Curtis, aren't you? Yes, sir. That's your dog? Yes, sir. He's mighty nice, isn't he? You don't remember me, do you? Sure. I guess one horse owner knows another. You sold me color sergeant. <laughs> That's right. And how would you like to sell him back to me? A nice profit, too. Well, we could use the money, but, gee, I'd hate to part with him. We want to help you, Jimmy. We know what a hard time your sister's had trying to make ends meet. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll go ask Stan what he's saying. Come on. <laughs> if luck's with us, I think we can make a deal. Not much. Come here. Dan! Yeah? What is it, son? Hammond wants to buy color sergeant's bag. No, oh, it sure helps us a lot. Hammond? We don't need his help. I'll talk to him. What do you want, Mr. Hammond? Turn around. I need a lot of luck. Look out, Walter. He's got a knife. <gasps> oh. 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 Better let me take care of him, Jimmy. Let's see. Come on, we've got to get this boy to the hospital. Open the door, Jimmy. Get in there, Moe. Got him? Yeah. yeah. Get in there with him. Hold him. If you have any near relatives, you'd better let me call them at once. You mean, Doc, I'm, I'm going to croak? I ain't got no relatives to bother about me. But I'd like to talk to Dan Morgan. Call Mr. Morgan. He's in the hall. Can you ease this bandage a little, Doc? I can hardly breathe. Well, I don't think it's the bandage, son, but I'll see. Doc here tells me I'm in a stretch. But the race will soon be over. Before I go under the wire, 
I want to give you the lowdown on the doping of your horse, Life Belt. Take it easy, boy. You got lots of time. Don't kid me, Mr. Morgan. Just listen. Hammond paid me to give Life Belt a dope carrot one hour before the race. You heard that, Doctor? Yes. I might have to call on you. Is there anything I could do for you, Knapsack? Anything at all? Not a thing. You know, June, it's funny that nobody ever thought of training our horse with bad feet this way before. Nobody but you. Thanks to Jimmy and the dog. Dan, you're too modest. I don't know how you put up with me. The best break I ever had. Your luck's going to change, Dan. And when it does, you'll be the greatest trainer in the world. Ah. Uh -huh. June. I have a letter from Mr. Dan. It's from the jockey club. They've reinstated me. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Come on, honey, we've got work to do. But as it was only Knapsack's word against Hammond's, why, he talked himself out of it. Yeah, he would. One of these days, I'll put him in a spot where talking won't do him any good. Come on, partner. See you later, Tut. All right, then. How are you, Fred? Hello, Dan. How you been? Fine. They can't keep a good man down. No, they're not good horse. Which means, I suppose, you're here to get color sergeant fixed up for sanity. You get to, Fred. Well, come on in. Okay. Partner, I want you to meet Mr. Newman, the racing secretary. This is Mr. Curtis. Well, Mr. glad to know you. So you're Dan Morgan's partner. I'm glad to welcome you to the racetrack. Welcome me to the racetrack? Say, listen, mister, I was born in the tack room on the fairground down in New Orleans. Then double welcome, old-timer. That's better. <laughs> well, Fred, if you got that blank, we'll sign it. Yes, sir. Here, you sign first, partner. Well, I didn't know you were a southpaw. You want to pay that fee now, Mr. Curtis? No, Mr. Secretary, I think we'll exercise our privilege and wait until Saturday morning. Suit yourself, gentlemen. Now that we've finished the business end of this, I've got a little surprise for you. Don't tell me you're going to get married, Fred. Not while I'm conscious. Oh, that's good. The track officials are giving a dinner tonight at the clubhouse in your honor at 8 o'clock. A dinner? In my honor? That's right, Dan. We all feel that you've got a raw deal, and we want to make amends. Gee, that's great. I, I appreciate it. And bring anybody you like as guests. Well, thanks for that, too, Fred. I couldn't think of going without my partner here. Oh, he said you couldn't think of going out without me, but it wouldn't go without my sis, June. Make it three. Oh, Jimmy, I, I see how it is. <laughs> well, we'll be there. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. What do you want? Hey, get a load of this. Morgan's starting color sergeant Saturday. How do you know? I was in the secretary's office when he signed the entry blank. What else did you find out? Well, the stuff shows that the track are throwing a dinner for Morgan at 8 o'clock in the clubhouse tonight. Oh, they are. At 8 o'clock tonight. Now, you listen to me. I got a fortune at stake, and there's going to be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We got to win. 
Hey, I thought this was in the bag. I bet 50 bucks on my own dough on him. Yeah? Well, if Morgan's horse runs, we're whipped. Uh, I wish you'd have listened to me last spring. What do you mean, listen to you? Well, you should have nominated Lady Killer instead of Carnation. Lady Killer's a 20-pound better horse than Color Sergeant is right today. Oh, you're going to tell me that. If I'd nominated Lady Killer instead of Carnation, we'd be sitting pretty. But it's too late to think about that now. Well, I guess we're whipped, then. And so tonight we are honoring an honest sportsman and a gallant gentleman, Mr. Dan Morgan. It's a fire. He's in life belt store. Here, lead him away. Yes. Anyway, we saved color, Sergeant. I don't know about the equipment. Mose will know about that. I could cry when I think of poor life belt. He was a faithful old fellow. Here comes Mose now with the bad news. Well, Mose, I guess it looks pretty bad over there this morning, huh? It sure does, boss. Everything got burned up last night but one old saddle. Where's color, Sergeant? He's over at Mr. Tuttle's barn. He ain't a scratch on him, and he ran to go. <laughs> How's Mr. Jimmy? Not so good, Moe. Poor little kid. He sure did his best last night. You can run up and see him a minute if you want to. You think you like these? Surely he likes flowers. Well, I guess you want to stay around here, don't you? I'll run along. I'll see you at dinner. This is Friday, Dan. Well, what about it? What are you going to do about your entrance fee? Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll get it somehow. Goodbye. Uh, pardon me. Are you Mr. Morgan? Yep. What can I do for you? I'm from the Continental Insurance Company. So what? Don't bother me. I don't want any insurance. But Mr. Morgan. Seems like I want to get anything done around here. I got to do it myself. Gee, I couldn't help it if life belt got burned instead of color, Sergeant. I did the best I could. Well, your best isn't good enough. I want results. We gotta take chances. Well, it's okay with me. All right, then. Meet me in front of Lady Killer's stall tonight at 12 o'clock. I'll show you something you never saw before. Uh, now about this insurance. I don't want any insurance. But Mac, you've been reading the papers. You know what they think of my horse's chances in the big race? Yeah, he's a dangerous threat, all right. Well, this morning's the last chance I've got to enter him. I need 500 bucks. If you'll let me have it, I'll give you a thousand after the race. 
Well, what a sucker I'd be to lend you any money. I've got two grand bet on Carnation. Okay. So you see, Dan, if I'm betting good money on Carnation to win, well, you know how it is. Yeah, I see, Rennie. Dan, I'd let you have it in a minute. But I wouldn't be showing good sense. I've got a sweet bet on Hammond's horse. All right, Pop. Carnation was an eight to five favorite. What price they got on color time? Second choice, two and a half to one. That's a juicy prize. What have they got on lunch hour? Six to the one. Take any other? Oh, I'm a sentimental old fool. I'm shooting the roll on lunch hour to show. And a little on your horse to win, just in case. <laughs> I hope we both win. How's Jimmy feeling, honey? The doctor says he's coming along slow, but sure. That's fine. As soon as he gets well enough, we'll take him for a nice trip. Where to? And with what? Well, after the fourth race, we'll have all the money in the world. You have plenty to do, Dan. I'll go over and watch the races. Be sure and join me before the fourth race. I will. Bridget. Now get this. There's only one horse in the race you got to look out for. That's Morgan's color, Sergeant. I know it, sir. Well, keep your eyes open to see you're not crowded into the rail. I understand. Give him a good ride. Now, Evans, don't give color, Sergeant, too much early foot. Keep him in fourth place to the three-eighth pole. Then give him his head. Hunter, I'm depending on you.
The horses are nearing the starting gate. There are many familiar faces here today. There's Dan Morgan with a beautiful girl on his arm. That's my partner and my sis, June. Don't get too excited, Jimmy. You mustn't talk. Well, you'd get excited, too, if you had a horse running for $100,000. Come on, dear, lie down. That was Cedar Bush and Bonnie Prince that broke through. Oh, Dan, I'm so nervous. Look at my hands, I'm trembling like a leaf. Don't worry, honey. Color Sergeant's going to bring in all the marbles. Do you really think so? Well, sure. And when he does, I'll, uh, I'll... Uh... What? Well, let's wait till he wins. everything. I guess it does. Race isn't over until the judge makes it official. Wait here. Can I have a picture, Mr. Hammond? Okay. Yes. Yes, sure. Oh. 
But, Judge. What is it, Morgan? Before you make this race official, I want to make a protest. The horse that came in first in this race is not Carnation. What do you mean, Morgan? Judge, I protest Mr. Morgan's interference. But, Judge, I certainly have a right to prove my statement. Right ahead, Mr. Morgan. Get me a can of ether. Just a minute, folks. Dan Morgan, owner of Color Sergeant, is making some sort of a protest. Now, I'll show you what I mean. The ringer, a half-brother, lady killer. Gentlemen, you know the answer. The judges have disqualified the horse carnation and have declared color sergeants the winner. Cedar was second and lunch hour third. Lunch hour in the money! Pardon me, Mr. Morgan. I got one buck here. If you let me have four more and the rest of the day off, I think I'll get married. Well, <laughs> you too, huh? Yes, sir. Me and Ma Dandrilla. All right, Mo. Here. There's ten. Make it a big wedding. Thank you, sir. You sure is a fine man. <laughs> 